Good morning. Welcome to the Facebook live streaming of the Sunday morning worship service of the House of the Lord. Coming from the Great Worship Center on May 24, 2020. We are still living in unprecedented times, so we are still heeding the physical distancing mandate of our governor. I'm watching the trends of those who are being infected and those who are dying so that we can discern when we will attempt to get back together again. In the meantime, we thank God uh, for this particular medium. Uh, but before we get started today, we need to sing, sing a little bit to get this down in our, in our spirit. You probably remember this song, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Well, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, because you brought me. You brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. Mighty long way. Well, I thank you, Jesus. Come on, sing. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Oh, you brought me. You brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Where are you going back right now? Well, you've been my bread. You've been my bread. You've been my bread. My water too. Because you brought me, brought me from a mighty, thank you, mighty long way, mighty long way. Well, you've been my bread. You've been my bread. You've been my bread. My water too. Oh, you brought me. You brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Now think about where he brought you from. Well, you've been my mother. You've been my father. You've been my sister, my brother too. Cause you brought me, brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Mighty long way, well, you've been my father. You've been my father. You've been my sister, my brother too. Oh, you brought me. You brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. It's pandemic time, so you've been my doctor. Well, you've been my doctor. You've been my doctor. You've been my doctor. My lawyer too. Cause you brought me, brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Mighty long way. You've been my doctor, you've been my doctor, you've been my doctor, my lawyer too. Yes, you brought me, brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Well, the words are kind of getting right good right there. Well, through every sickness, through every trial, through every valley, you brought me through, yes, you brought me, brought me from a mighty, mighty long way, mighty long way, through every sickness, every trial, through every trial, through every valley, you brought me through, yes, you brought me, brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Now I want you to thank him at home and say, well, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you when I pray. Because you brought me, brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Mighty long way. Well, I want to thank you. I want to thank you, I want to thank you, when 
I pray. Yes, you brought me, you brought me from a mighty, mighty long. Just one more time, I thank you, Jesus. Well, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Why? Because you brought me, brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. Mighty long way. Well, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Yes, you brought me. You brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you this morning because you brought us all from a mighty long way, not just through the pandemic, but over the course of our lives. When I look back over my life and think about where you brought me from, I want to thank you, Jesus. I want to thank you because you brought me from a mighty long way. You've been my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, a doctor, a lawyer. You bring everything that I need. And so we thank you today. We ask you to open our hearts and minds to a fresh revelation of your word that we might be able to process it in our minds, live it out in our lives. I don't know about you, but I'm glad when I woke up this morning, I was in my right mind, had the activity of my limbs. I'm glad to be able to get out, get up and come out today to be able to worship and to join you in this medium. Now, we take the service, we place it in your hands. Whatever is accomplished, we say yes to your will. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we give thanks. Come on at home, wherever you are, in the car and say praise God and amen. Well, I'm so glad you're here today. The Bible is so dynamic and alive that the words that were written thousands of years ago seem like they were written this morning. We've been working on uh, these particular verses in Psalm 935 is one of those. Jesus was going through all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and every kind of disease and every kind of sickness he was healing. Seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited like sheep without a shepherd. From the beginning, I've been saying, from the beginning, and I just started last week, didn't start a couple weeks ago, that we are like sheep without a shepherd. The pandemic is showing and demonstrating issues that are going on in our lives, and we thank God that we've got a shepherd. The Bible repeatedly uses the simile of people being like sheep. Unfortunately, we are uh, not uh, agrarian. We are not agricultural, so we don't understand it. But David talks about it in the 23rd Psalm, and we've been using Philip Keller's uh, Shepherd's Look at the 23rd Psalm. He used the King James Version, so that's what I'm using. I, I don't know. I feel like today, I mean, how, how's that dinner, how that breakfast roll you eating? Maybe, maybe you could stand up today just one time and say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. And he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Are you standing up at home? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Somebody ought to name a church, the house of the Lord. The psalm begins with a joyous statement. Remember, the Lord is my shepherd ends with a joyous affirmation, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Remember what, that David is speaking as a sheep. He's satisfied with the shepherding of Yahweh. He is so at home in the house of the Lord that he doesn't ever want to leave. We ought to be missing our church house right about now. We can't wait to dwell again in the house 
of the Lord. Now, some of y'all couldn't ever, you didn't ever think you would come to the point where you would actually want to come to church, would you? I mean, we were just taking that so for granted. But in contrast, the shepherd has developed a great affection and devotion. Healthy, contented, productive sheep are his delight and profit. So strong now are the bonds between them that it is the very truth forever. Not only do we take delight in God's house, but we take delight in our attendance. So some of us are missing. I know that some folks and those of us who are more on the loner end, we're pretty good. Uh, we, I ain't got to come back to church right now, but I'm telling you that we need to gather back together at some point. The word house is particularly instructive. The word would make us think of a sanctuary or a church. But remember, David is writing from the perspective of sheep. The psalmist has been recounting the full year of the sheep's activities, of the activities of the flock. He has taken them from the green pastures and still waters of the home ranch, up through the mountain passes, onto the high tablelands of the summer range. Fall has come, with its storm and rain and sleet that drive the sheep back down the foothill, back to the ranch home for the long, quiet winter. In a sense, this is coming home. It's a return to the fields and the corrals and the barns and the shelters of the owner's home. The Greek mindset causes us to miss the seasons, the cyclical nature of the context of the Bible. We are struggling because we don't know how to live within the cycles and the rhythms of life. We are used to ripping and running and rather than calmly attending the cycles of getting up, quiet time, family time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I just read an article that was sent to me about pastors and the fact that we're probably not doing very well right now because we're working more than we and intended to work or used to work and things are all messed up and we're probably not attending to ourselves physically nor spiritually and in all of this I, this is my perspective I still don't think we got a quiet time three months almost into this are we getting up are we praying are we reading during all the seasons of the year with their hazards their dangers their disturbances it is the rancher's alertness his care his energetic management that have brought the sheep through satisfactorily I, I want you to understand we're making it right now not because we're healthy we're making it right now not because we're doing the right thing we're making it right now because the shepherd is watching over us what is referred to then by the house is the flock the fold of the good shepherd we are tended by the good shepherd and he said david said we have everything we need no sheep walks away from jesus because of a lack of care they may get heavy they may become cast but it is not the fault of the shepherd think of the sheep standing at the fence bragging to his unfortunate neighbor it's been a good year and i will dwell with my shepherd forever. That ought to be our testimony to everybody we meet right now. When I consider my life and when I look back over my life, I got to say, God's been good to me and I will stay with him forever. I'm not thinking about turning God in right now. I'm going to stick with him. This will influence others to want to move from the devil's poor care and pastures to the good shepherd, the great shepherd, and the chief shepherd. Isn't that what witnessing is all about? Being so satisfied with Christ's care that we're going out to find other people to come and get under his care. Somebody said that witnessing is going out trying to get other people to come and tell them I found bread. I want you to come with me. The author, Philip Keller, tells of the experience of a sheep in a poorly managed ranch next to his. Said when the winter came, the tides would cause the sea to retreat. And, and, and this exposed land at the end of the fences, which would normally run into the sea. Then the neighbor's sheep would slip around the fence, gorge themselves on the rich green grass in another shepherd's pasture. What happens next is shocking. 
to those of us who are not ranchers. So pitiful and pathetic was their condition that the sudden feast of lush feed to which they were unaccustomed often proved disastrous. The poor creatures would develop diarrhea and they could lead to death. Now I know some of y'all asking me, what that, what that got to do with me? What are, you, what are you talking about? I've seen it before in Christianity when saints who are not used to eating well begin to attend the church where there was good food and end up gorging themselves to the point of sickness. Those of us who have eaten well for years tend to take green pastures for granted. But when you haven't had any food and you start eating, it can be disastrous to you. We get, we get full, we get overburdened, we can get become cast. Now, those of us who've been members of the house of the Lord for years, we just take it for granted. But those sheep that haven't had any, they don't. The author goes on to talk about how he found sheep near death. He carried them back to the owner. Where the owner, don't, don't fall off, off your seat, simply pulled out his knife and slit their throats. He couldn't care less. Isn't that how Satan is? He's got little care for those that he owns. The devil keeps after us, and he wants to take God's place. And he's, he's trying to bribe us and bring us in. Come on, I'll be a shepherd to you. But I want you to know he doesn't care for you. We're reminded of what Jesus said. John 10, 7 says, so Jesus said to them, truly, truly, amen, amen. Verily, verily, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Jesus is the door, the entrance of the sheep. And those who come by some other gate do not belong there. They are not really Christ's sheep. The author then applies this to the sheep that came around the fence. They had not entered by the gate. They were not his. Therefore, they were, under, they were not under his management. Had they been under his management, he would have managed them better. He would have managed their diet better until that they were, that new diet would have fit in to their, with their care and what was going. Unfortunately, these sheep were caring for themselves. I'm glad that the Lord is my shepherd. I'm glad that I got a shepherd and I'm not out trying to take care of myself. I'm glad for those of you who are on the broadcast, who are on the live stream, that you have got a shepherd. There is one other sense in which the psalmist was speaking as sheep. The Amplified Old Testament reads like this, I will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Is that the most significant sentiment of David as a sheep? Probably so. Sheep always want to be in the presence of the shepherd. And we want to be in the presence of Yahweh at all times. Let me make sure that you understand why I do what I do. Why I'm working like I'm working. It, it, I, I'm your shepherd. And as your shepherd, it's important that you are able to see me and hear my voice. Therefore, we are working on broadcast quality and all of those kinds of things. Why? Because when you see your shepherd, there is a sense of comfort and stability. And so we work to get those things straightened out. I remember the, one of the last major, major crises was 9-11. And I think I shared this before, but I'm old, so I can share it over again. And, and, and that morning, we decided when we, we figured out what was going on to come back and to be at church on a Wednesday night, cut our vacation short to get back. And when we walked in, folks walked in and said, I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. It's the reason I sit over here when you come back in that chair right there. I don't sit in that chair. Notice it doesn't have any king stuff behind it. There's no big chair. I'm not me sitting in a big chair. You sit in a little chair. It's about stability. It's about love. It's about care. That when you see the shepherd, there is a sense that everything is going to be all right. Thus, this has been the theme of the series from the beginning. We come to the end of this series. It is the alertness, the awareness, the diligence of the never tiring shepherd who alone assures the sheep of excellent care that God has got his eye on you and he's watching you and he's measuring your care. He wants to make sure that you are healthy. And from the sheep standpoint, it is knowing that the shepherd is there. It is the constant awareness of his presence nearby that automatically eliminates 
most of our difficulties, most of our danger, at the same time providing a sense of security and serenity. It's no wonder that the world is in chaos right now. They don't have a shepherd. But those of us who have a shepherd are guaranteed of the following things. Let me summarize now. When you have a shepherd, Evie Hill said, when you have Jesus, you have these things. There will be no lack. You have everything you need. There will be abundant green pastures. You will have some place to eat. There will be still clean waters. Your soul will be refreshed. There will be new paths in the fresh fields. There will be safe summers on high tableland. When you have God and Jesus, when he is your shepherd, there will be freedom from fear of enemies. When you have a good shepherd, there will be antidotes for flies and disease and parasite. And there will be quietness and contentment. You say, well, that's not me. I don't have any flies. Well, okay, well, let's bring it down to you. We find in God's presence all of our needs supplied. The word of God is abundant. The water of life flows richly. We have chosen paths. God has outlined some paths for us that we might walk in the newness of life. There is guidance into the highlands of victory. And there is freedom from the fear of enemies. There are antidotes from distraction. People are distracted. They're all over the place. But when you have Jesus, you can look to him and he calms your distraction. And there is quietness and there is contentment. We want to live forever in the presence of our Savior and our Lord. In my study of Genesis, I've identified God's blessing as including provision, protection, and God's presence. And while we look as modern saints, we are preoccupied with material blessing. The Hebrews are far more interested in the presence of the Lord. They don't want to lose one thing, and that is, don't take your Holy Spirit from us. Don't take your presence from us. I need your presence every day. As I sang on Wednesday night, I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Similarly then, I can say today, as we come to the end of this, that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Thank you, Lord, that he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over, surely. Surely, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, thank you for being the good shepherd the great shepherd, the chief shepherd. Father, thank you for watching over us in good times and in bad times. Thank you that in the midst of all that's going on, you are our shepherd and we have no needs. You've taken care of everything that we need. Now, I know some folks, Lord, are suffering in various ways, but you are attending to them right now. You're coming to their care. You're coming to their needs. You're coming to what they need, and we want to dwell in your presence forever. If there's somebody who doesn't know you, may they accept you right now by just saying, Lord, I'm sorry for every sin that I've sinned against you. Come in my life and save me. Make me the person you want me to be. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. We pray that it meant that it's a heart transaction between you and God. If you need a church home, there'll be some text to, get, uh, text to join information there. Please take advantage of it. So we'd like to have you. We have people who have joined, and when we get back together, we look forward to seeing you. And then for the rest of us, Father, just thank you for being our shepherd. <laughs> I'm just glad that you're my shepherd, and I don't want. Thank you that you watch over us with special care. And we're going to praise you for that. 
one day forever. It is in the marvelous, mighty name of Jesus that we pray and we give thanks. Come on, somebody, and say praise God at home and amen. We're about time for you to give that offering that you need to give. Thank you for your faithfulness. We're going to wave the phone, I guess, the, the iPad or whatever it is, and make this affirmation. Remember, I'm watching TV, and there's a lot of negative stuff over there. So we got to make some positive affirmations because you tend to get what you say. Are you ready at home? Are you ready in the car, wherever you are, as we give today's offering? We are believing the Lord for discernment, safety from infection, deliverance from fear, and social isolation, job security, grocery resources, medical resources, psychological resources, unemployment resources, spiritual resources, concern for others, trust in you, emotional peace, spiritual peace, a commitment to prayer, healing and divine health. It's offering time. Hallelujah. Go ahead and say hallelujah. Thank you for your faithfulness. We just want to encourage you to continue to use the electronic means of giving for your offering. Even when we get back together, uh, some of the conditions are going to dictate and they'll make it better for you to keep giving that way. Some of us are using automatic withdrawal. We've signed up. When we get back, you can do that. Some are doing text to the house of the Lord. Some are doing push pay on the website. Some push pay on the logo, uh, on, the, on our mobile app. If you're mailing your offering, make sure you use our post office box. But if you just want to drop it off or I'm going to get a deacon to come pick it up, whatever you need, we want to make sure that we are serving you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Last Sunday, Facebook froze up. You had Pastor Kathy's picture, but my voice, hallelujah. Well, that's good. I'm glad that you still were able to hear the message. For the future, we are continuing to work, to work out all of these things. And so we are now streaming simultaneously to Facebook Live, to YouTube Live on our channel, and to the website Live at the same time. So if that should ever happen again, you can switch and go to another medium and still keep on getting what you need. And if that doesn't work, your phone's not working, that this is out, the, the media, the, the Wi-Fi is out, the sermon will be posted later for your viewing. So it'll be there. We also have a phone line where you can get the sermon on demand. I don't know about you, but we're getting closer to gathering at church, and not because your president said so, but because we're going to look and see what's going on. So I'll begin to outline pretty soon now how we're going to get back together, how we're going to do that. You can start looking for some special broadcasts that I'm going to be doing because we need to look at the numbers, wait on the Lord, discern what God is saying. But we're going to need some instructions so that we know what to do when we begin to come back together. I'm excited about it, but we, we don't want to do it before it's safe. We want it to be as safe as we possibly can. Uh, we got one more Sunday and then communion. There's five Sundays in May, but it's a holiday. So tomorrow, enjoy that holiday. Remember what God has done for you. This song captures such deep sentiment that I can't wait to get back together with you and, and sing it. But I want you to sing it where you are right now and say, I need you. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. As we go up, think about the importance of these words. I need you. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. Come on, sing. You are important to me. I need you to 
victor by. We're not going to make it without prayer. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. And I need you to survive. And I won't harm you with words from my mouth. With words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to. Come on, let me hear you. I pray for you. pray. I'm listening. I love you. I need you to. And I won't harm you with words from my mouth. With words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Have a great rest of the day. Wonderful holiday. Get ready. We're going to be getting back together, I think. In not too distant future, God is, will work it out. Until then, I'll see you on Wednesday and on Thursday. Have a great weekend.